thank you for sitting down to speak with us. Yeah, I'm really glad to have this opportunity. Uh, I assume, in part, you wrote this book to set the record straight. Do you feel like you've been able to do that? Well, it was really hard work also because uh, coming up with all my feelings inside this uh, tragedy is really painful. <laughs> it was a really hard job from a really uh, g very good team and because there's the contribution of my father, my sister, and so my aunt, uh, so uh, that and uh, <coughs> that and lawyer of mine and yeah, it was really a really big, huge uh, work on that just to give the overall view of the, the trial and the, this ordeal. I didn't want to put inside only <coughs> my feelings and my emotion about my experience, but give the overall image to reveal exactly the truth about any detail in this tragedy. Has it been received the way you had hoped it would be? I read one review that said it raised more questions about where Amanda was um, and that it was sensational. Um, other reviews have have said different things, uh, but has it been received by people the way you had hoped? Uh, still, it, it came out uh, one week ago, so I'm still w looking at the result of this. But in my book, I go toward each moment and each step of the trial and of, of the ordeal with all my sensations. I'm kind of naked in this book about everything and also my thoughts and my feelings along the way, my feelings along the way. So anything that is spread around by the media is just a sentence in the middle of a really long uh, speaking, you know, it's the long explaining of step by step what, what were my thoughts when I, would have, when I was in panic, uh, what were uh, the situation about uh, the peculiarities around uh, the attention on uh, Amanda's uh, behavior or, uh, I mean, uh, of, the, of the prosecution behavior, uh, the detective's uh, points, there's everything inside. Also the judges, uh, how do they uh, uh, decide, how do they behave along the way. There's really everything, any detail about the case. Let's talk about some of those details. You describe police finding the alleged murder weapon in your apartment. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost uh, incredible. I mean, uh, I gave, uh, um, I was questioned by the, prosecu by the detectives uh, and uh, they were uh, really uh, rude with me. Uh, but uh, just to tell them that I, have, I had nothing to hide, I gave them my keys, my apartment keys. And they came in uh, inside my apartment, they turned the right to the, um, to the kitchen. And uh, they just opened the first drawer, they opened it. And the first knife that came on top from, uh, from the drawer, they picked the, the knife up, they pulled, uh, they, this uh, detective was talking with uh, her, his colleague and say, do you think it's good? And the other one said, yeah, it will be. They, pick, they, pull, they put uh, the, the knife in up into a bag, and after two weeks, that was the murder weapon. Well, for me, I, I cannot describe it, how it's sensational and incredible it is, but it's almost unbelievable. That was my reaction. It's so outrageous, it's unbelievable. Yeah, outrageous. It's the right word, yeah. You, you can describe it much better than me, but it was, I was in jail, so some people uh, would laugh for something like that, but I was suffering, I was in solitary confinement, and just realizing from the media and from the television that they were treating uh, the overall situation in such an incredible way, in such an outrageous way, was really painful for me because there was nothing to just, there was nothing fun about that. You're talking about calling Amanda Foxy Noxy, 
um, saying that it was a sex-fueled crime. Is that what you're referring to uh, in talking about the media treatment? Well, the media treatment, they, uh, they just wanted to grab the audience attention because um, this lovable couple, a young couple with hands and blood, was so attractive to the audience and they, uh, and they found a good way to make money on that. But th this is just a fancy story, this is just an invention because they were treating something as um, a an, an kind of novel uh, to uh, real people. And there's a long, a long distance between a fancy story and the real uh, happenings. So now I have the opportunity with my book to tell the truth about the overall case and just keep my figure back to me in my own and explain exactly who really I am uh, and who, what, uh, what I went through. Some of that came from the behavior that the media saw uh, the day of the interrogations, uh, you and Amanda kissing. Uh, and you describe some of that in your book as well, some of Amanda's behavior at the police station. Can you tell me a little bit about what she did and how you reacted? Well, um, there are different moments, but if you were referring about her, her coming with, to me and hugging me and just um, coaching on, uh, on me, uh, it was just an affectionate moment during a very long-lasting uh, waiting for the, for the next interrogation. So it's just a very short moment in the middle of a long waiting. Uh, the media uh, liked to collapse at the time and just uh, reveal the peculiarities. And uh, the detectives uh, made a very good um, dealing with this because uh, just uh, um, uh, pointing the attention on some peculiarity that was really easy for them uh, that made uh, a lot of their job much more uh, quick and fluent. Uh, but uh, on the end, uh, I just felt, uh, I described that I just felt uncomfortable because the detectives, they had eyes on us all over the time, 24 hours a day. And um, even if it was uh, uh, the most, uh, the most in, uh, um, it, it, any any detail, any any kind of behavior would be described by them like uh, something suspicious uh, about suspicion, because they just wanted it. They uh, they felt easy to attack some naive guys uh, because they had a lot of pressure to solve the case as quick as possible. So they uh, be also because the University of Perugia is one of the most important uh, foreign university in Italy. And that was the start to, uh, to try to figure out the, the most uh, uh, easy way to uh, relieve their uh, stress. And we were the, 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 an easy target for them. You describe in your book as well police, lawyers, even at times your own family, as trying to get you to turn on Amanda. Why was it important to you to maintain your connection with her and not turn on her? Well, uh, on the plate, for, for me, there was uh, spending the, all the life in prison, which is almost a death. And on the other plate was throwing uh, Amanda under the bus and maybe get released. But for me, these plates have the same uh, the <coughs> have the same pain because I cannot walk on the street uh, and be like a free man just realizing that I'm the reason for a, an innocent 20 years old girl to spend the rest of her life in prison. I cannot bear that. And that was my choice just because just when I was in solitary confinement I realized that I had, I had nothing to lose. Everything has, has gone. My life, as I, it used to be, is, com is completely gone. So for me, the only thing th that I own at that time, when all the world was against us, was the truth. And for me, 
I just throw the truth ahead of me and they said the truth is much more important than my life and whatever. They, they can kill me, they can do anything with me, but I will, the only thing that I own is the truth and I will use that. What, what did you focus on to get through those most difficult times? I focused uh, just to take my moral up, uh, just uh, um, taking care about my health, which is difficult, especially uh, if you hold some uh, feeling like anger or um, any kind of feeling of affection. It's hard to go on in everyday prison life, especially when you are in solitary confinement. So uh, I just uh, take my mind uh, inside just um, saying, okay, you hold the truth, uh, go on until the end. You have just to be strong and be in, uh, in, good, in good health. Uh, be, uh, just try to push my moral up sometimes with my family, my friends, uh, with their support, the other people around the world support because I received almost three, four letters a day. Um, Anything that could happen me, it could help me to pass me the time writing letters, reading books, uh, exchanging also correspondence with Amanda or anybody around. Anything would have been uh, really a very good help for me to go on. Your book also describes your visit to Seattle the first time uh, earlier this year, seeing Amanda for the first time after having been acquitted. Have you seen her this trip? Yes, of course, um, on Saturday, Saturday night. What did you do? Uh, we had uh, a normal, um, uh, normal uh, moments with uh, her family. Uh, we shared a, a party dinner uh, with all the family. And uh, we, we just uh, joined to be together and uh, celebrate uh, because after our acquittal, uh, every day is a celebration for us. So um, we just celebrated the fact that I'm here in Seattle, and it was really nice. I uh, spent the time with uh, her, her boyfriend, her sister, her, her cousins, uh, her um, grandma, her mom. Uh, aunts, uncles, everybody. <laughs> yeah, very huge family. In a, a synopsis or a summary of your book that I read, one of the things it says is, um, he refused to betray the woman he loved. But it also points out that you and Amanda had only been together for one week dating. Exactly. Uh, did you love her? Do you love her? Uh, can you repeat, please? Did, did you love Amanda Knox? Uh, I, I know oh, that you're not yeah. romantically involved now, but did you? Were you in love with her? Yeah, of course. At that time, I was in love with her. Uh, well, it was uh, just I cannot describe it uh, as a, a very deep, profound love because we were just dating. So it's kind of a flower that it's a seed that you put on the ground, and it's starting to go up and grew up, and you just expect that. Maybe it will be blossom, but uh, someone uh, uh, they took uh, the uh, the land and destroyed the the seed and everything, and everything has gone. So um, if I can describe it, it's just that because nothing uh, had been the time to blossom or anything. We were just starting to know each other. How frequently? How often do you keep in touch now? Oh, it depends. So it's not there's not a time in which we keep in touch. It could be once a month. It could be uh, once uh, every uh, every week. It depends on uh, if we are I'm busy or I'm concentrated on something else. Um, because I'm moving on with my life, with my uh, with my things, with my relationships, with my. Uh, little problems, you know. I'm building up another life now, and I think she she is doing the same in a different way. So we are moving in different directions right now. Do you 
how, I'm curious just how you keep in touch, email, Skype, Facebook friends? Uh, no, just uh, email and uh, Skype. Mm, this is th those are the, the way we communicate. Uh, and yeah, and the rest of the time I spend time. Yeah, mm, we we keep in touch in this way, like a good fr like good friends. Has she read your book? Yes. What did she tell you about it? She is really glad about my book, and uh, she told me that she's impressed the way I wrote it. Because I, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, we never discuss just because are really painful. And in this book, I uh, just uh, needed to reveal everything. Uh, it was something that I had to do. And she understands, and she's really glad about it. You also mention in your book, on your first trip, you met with a company here. Um, a video game manufacturer? Yeah, but <laughs> I cannot tell the, the video company which, which one is. Oh, yeah, is it, it was. Is it a company you're still speaking with? Uh, sometimes, but um, I'm still going on to get uh, my master's degree. I miss only seven exams. I'm working on it. And I just have to do everything step by step. I cannot jump and uh, uh, go further uh, until I end my master. So I have to f finish my master. Uh, the time is only seven exams, which means almost one year of study. And in the meanwhile, I will try also to um, do, ex do exams as quickly as possible, just and then get to the in uh, to an internship, and then try to figure out which place is better for me to settle down. Could you imagine? taking a job here in this area, settling down here? It, it, it could be, it could be. Um, I still didn't decide it. So uh, it's a work in progress situation and any place will be uh, good for me. Just um, it's, uh, it's, it's something that I'm not in a hurry to decide. You must um, value time more than most of us and not want to rush things in your life, I would imagine. Yeah, because uh, since I was, re I was being released, I started to approach the life like a child who discovers uh, a new world and just a new birth. Because it's something like uh, they killed me and then a judge came to me, raised me up and said, this is your new life do the best you can. So now I'm working uh, to building up my new life and I'm going really fast, as fast as possible to grow up and get used to this new life as soon as possible because I have to make fit my soul with this new body. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us. I'm really glad to be here and Appreciate have this opportunity. It. Thank you.